Home STEM Series. My name is Ben Renwick and I'm the STEM coordinator at Covestro. Today, I will be your host. Now, typically, Covestro's I3 STEM program goes out to schools in the communities and works directly with students to get them interested and excited about science or STEM-related careers at an early age. Today, however, we're going to bring the STEM activities to your home. And what we're going to do today is we're going to build and we're going to engineer. So we're going to need some materials for us to do that. So what you're going to need is some paper. You need rubber bands, paper clips, some tape, a stapler. And those things are going to help us create, if you haven't guessed it already, paper airplanes. Now paper airplanes, very simple concept. You've probably made these before. But that's just the first part of our build to this particular edition today. We are also going to create an airplane launcher. Now this is a prototype that was created here. So essentially which also the materials you're going to need is some building materials. Now this one here is made out of Lego, which I think is a great tool to use to be able to engineer and to build the whole design process of what our launcher could look like. You could also use cardboard if you have some at your home as well. That can help create a nice launch pad for you too. So what I also created here is using actual construction materials. So some wood, I have some screws here that actually has my rubber band in place too. So those are the materials that you're going to need today. And now before we get started into this, I wanna be able to set some context to this as well. So pretend with me for a little bit here. Pretend you're holding a paper airplane in your hand already. It's invisible, I know you can't see it. And then imagine that you're gonna go ahead and throw it, right? You reach back, you're gonna throw it like this, and then it glides across the room. Now, instead of going through the whole motion of doing it, I want you to keep your shoulder still and your elbow still, and you can only use your wrist and flick it. So, do you think that just using the flick of your wrist, the airplane's gonna go very far? No, I don't think it's gonna go very far either. In fact, it only went about three or four feet. Doesn't go very far, still glided pretty nicely though. So that is what brings us to why we need to create a launcher today. And we'll talk about that later towards the end of the video of what the launcher is actually doing for us, okay? So I wanna go ahead and get you guys into this, build, this activity. We're gonna go ahead and build some paper airplanes. And what I encourage you to do, maybe if you're an expert, paper airplane build already, go online, find some really challenging designs of paper airplanes, and I want you to build them. Make sure that you're creating a lot of these because we're going to test a lot of these as well throughout this activity. So if you have your materials and you're ready to go, go ahead and start building some airplanes. you've already tested them out. Now we need to make one slight modification to our paper airplane before it can effectively work on a launcher. So you need to grab that paper clip that I told you about using earlier and what you need to do is you need to attach it to the front of your plane. What this is going to do is this is going to act as our hook to be able to grab onto the rubber band that we're going to put on our launcher. So what I did is I took the paper clip and I actually pushed it back, mine had a slit in the front of the airplane here. I pushed it back here and then I stapled it that actually grabs onto the paper clip so it doesn't get yanked out of the paper airplane. Now you want it as snug as it can be back there because imagine you're gonna pull back on this, it's gonna put a lot of stress on that. Make sure the paper, the paper clip does not move very much whenever you put it in there. If a stapler doesn't work for you, you might be able to use some tape as well, but the stapler I found was a pretty good effective tool in order to keep that paper clip secure. So now what we need to do is start building our launch pads. And so what I showed you beforehand was a, a Lego prototype. And the reason I liked using the Lego is because you can design it, you can build it, you can tear it apart, you can redesign it if you need to. It's a really easy way to be able to build and destruct a little bit as well to get to the type of prototype that you want. Now let's talk about something on here that we didn't mention earlier, and that is this rubber band. What is the importance of this rubber band here? Yes, it's gonna help us launch it, but do you remember whenever I talked about the short distance, whenever you hold your arm up like this? You can't go very far whenever you're just doing this. There's not a lot of room for the plane to take off. 
And so that's where the rubber band comes into play here because the rubber band has what's called potential energy, all right? And whenever you add the plane onto here and you hook on, it still has the potential energy and when you release, now it's creating what's called kinetic energy or motion energy at that point. And that's the importance of why our launcher is so successful whenever we use this plane. So I know I've talked about it already, let's go ahead and start building here. Now a couple tips that I have for you it, for your launcher is you need to make sure that it's stable. Make sure it's not gonna fall apart whenever you pull back the airplane on it because when you pull it back here, it could, do, it could crumble within your hand. So make sure that you have it strong enough that it's going to be, be able to withstand that. Also make sure that your rubber band is tall enough so whenever you also release it, the nose of your airplane is not hitting the actual launcher itself and instead it allows it to be a smooth takeoff from the launcher. So again, if you have the Lego, I encourage you to use that construction paper we talked about, or I'm sorry, cardboard we talked about you can use, and then eventually, or if you wanna just jump into something like this that's a lot more sturdy and stable, you can create something like this too. So I hope you have some pretty good ideas of what you wanna do in mind. If something doesn't fit together, that's all right. That's part of the process. Go back, redesign it, re-engineer it, and then you'll come out with a launcher that you're satisfied with. So go ahead, start working on your launchers, and we'll check back with you in a few minutes. so great. Turns out that our rubber band needed to be placed a little bit higher in order for this to smoothly take off of our launcher. So we had to go back and figure out how we could redesign this to make it work more efficiently. And maybe you had those same problems too, which is okay. That's part of the design process. That's why we go through this before you actually build maybe a final model of what your launcher can look like. So you have your launcher you have your airplane, you can go ahead and shoot this off and have fun with it. I encourage you to have fun with it today. But before you do that, I wanna challenge you to take this launcher a bit further. Take it to the next level. Maybe change the angle of how your airplane is shooting off. Maybe change out the rubber bands. Do you have some thicker ones? Do you have longer ones? How does that affect you how your airplane takes off by maybe changing the angle or having different rubber bands? Those are things I want you to test out on your own. Okay, I challenge you to do that. So again, we have our launcher, we have our airplane. And before we finish up here today, I wanna to revisit what was happening with our launcher in the paper airplane. Now remember, I told you earlier that you could only use the flick of your wrist, okay, for your plane to be able to go up into the air. So using that, we don't really have a lot of space in order for this plane to generate enough speed. And if you think about a real life airplane and how it gets up in the air, it has a long runway that can generate enough speed to get enough lift to go up into the air. So that's what our airplane needs here. It needs a little more space to be able to do that, but that's not what we created here with our launcher. Our launcher, we made this rubber band on purpose to be on here to give some extra push to be able to get this airplane to shoot off in the air. That potential energy turns into kinetic energy or motion energy in order to get this to shoot off like that. Can you think of a real life application where you have a short runway and it has to shoot a plane off into the air, maybe over the ocean, it's an aircraft carrier. If you've seen an aircraft carrier, they shoot these jets off in the air at an incredible speed, but they actually use kind of like what looks like a catapult to be able to launch their jets off of this shorter runway. If you haven't seen a video about it before, I encourage you to check that out. So, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the conclusion of our first edition of Stay at Home STEM. And so I hope you come back and see the other videos that we're gonna have in the coming weeks. I encourage you to check that back out and see what fun and exciting things that we're doing. So thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this activity today and happy launching to you. Bye-bye. <laughs>